Hey everyone, Carrie Beck here with Homeschool Coffee Break, where we help you stop the overwhelm so you can actually take a coffee break while you're homeschooling. Today, what I want to do is go over a tool that we use through our whole homeschooling years for 10 years, and it's called notebooking. It is a great way for you to hop off that education conveyor belt, think outside the box, and give your kids a real education. I, um, I, realized that I have really given my kids notebooks to them. They're all adults, but I did find one of Ashley's. This is first grade because every year, whoever, every, whenever you went through first grade, you made a wildflower book. And this was her notebook. Now it's sort of falling apart, but let me just show you. She actually would go and pick the wildflowers. And then I guess we printed those out. I didn't even realize we had printers back then. Um, and so she had a notebook and she had to have a certain number of wallflowers that she identified. That is just one idea. Um, I want to talk to you today. And what I want to do is I want to talk about why notebooking, the benefits of home of notebooking, and then how you can use notebooking in your homeschool. So if you are tired of worksheets, tired of tests and exams that really don't tell you if your kids have learned anything, they're just regurgitating information, I will tell you this is for you. If you want your children to grow and to be leaders and take ownership of their education, this is definitely a tool that you need to use. Why notebooking? Because I believe notebooking is going to save you time, it's going to save you money, and it's going to save you frustration. Because otherwise, you've got a textbook for every subject times the number of kids. Let's just say you have three kids, six subjects times five days. That's 30 times three. That's 90 lessons a week that you have to plan. And you can actually do notebooking. Everyone's working at their own age level, and you can all be studying the same topic. So you're going to save time planning. You're going to save time just looking for materials. You're going to save a lot of frustration, especially if you have more than one child. And it really doesn't cost that much money. You don't have to go buy expensive curriculum. So I want to give you 10 benefits of notebooking. And I think as you hear these, listen to these uh, benefits. If you're multitasking, come back to me. Listen to these benefits and see if this would help your homeschool. I believe notebooking engages your children in their learning. It requires a child to put what they have learned in their head down on paper in words or pictures. You can do this as a six-year-old, even if you can't write sentences yet. You are no longer dependent or tied down to some curriculum that's telling you what to do. And then, you know, you're a type A person. You got to check off all those boxes in that curriculum. No, you have freedom in your homeschool. You can really do this with any experience whatsoever. Next, it encourages delight directed learning. You can let your kids choose something that they're interested in and learn it. This is called ownership in education, in their education, and taking leadership. If you want to raise your kids to be leaders and not follow the crowd, you've got to give them opportunities to lead in their life. And just by choosing some things that they want to study, that is taking ownership and leadership. It does not limit learning to just some prepackaged answers. I could go off on some stories. You know, Ashley was answering a question and she was using her mind. It was in fourth grade when they were going to a school and the teacher said, no, that's not right. She gave it back. No, that's not right. And I finally said, let's just write what the teacher wants. And she said, she got right. The thing is, Ashley was using critical thinking skills. She was thinking beyond that answer. And the teacher just wanted whatever was written in the answer key. So you can uh, go beyond and be more creative. Language arts is automatically woven into notebooking. Grammar, spelling, writing, they're all practiced naturally. Next, we create confident writers without tears. You see, kids work. Um, and their progress, they're progressing at their own level. We're not just cramming things into them to say, you must do this because some textbook or some lesson plan says you do it. So we can build them up and let them move at their own pace so that gets rid of some of the tears and then it gives them some confidence. It can provide instant documentation of what you're learning. If you have grandparents that are really concerned and you had your child bring a notebook with all that they have learned in whatever topic they're studying, I think that is very impressive. 
And you don't have to have a bunch of multiple choice tests to be able to prove because that is real learning. They're showing what they have actually learned. They're also a great review tool. So maybe you're going through something and we're coming to the end. Let's go back and review what you've learned. And it may have been several weeks study. So that's a good review tool. They are also just a great keepsake. Like even just looking at this, I ran back upstairs before I turned on recording. And I really remember um, the last notebook that I was showing here was uh, I think Gentry's um, Godly Woman notebook. And I left it at her house uh, last time I was or whenever we were doing it. I was excited to see this, but I'm going to have to give that to Ashley um, now. So they're great keepsake. And then number 10, it builds skills for lifelong learning. The things that you need to do to keep a notebook are thinking skills, learning skills, education, active listening, effective communication and deeper thinking skills as well. All of that is included in notebooking. Again, it goes back to raising our kids to lead well. So that was why, and then we have benefits. Let's talk about how. So I would encourage you for the first time to just choose a topic for the whole family. I wouldn't give topics to all your different kids. Let's all stick on one topic. And mom, you are not gonna choose the topic. You're going to let your kids choose because they take ownership and leadership in that. So you're going to go get some books. You may have some activities. Your children are going to learn about that topic. They are going to record at their level. So a high schooler might be writing um, a one-page essay about it. A six-year-old may be drawing pictures about that. Let's say we're doing gardening they could draw a picture of the garden. They could show the rows and they could use their math. So it's more than just writing a paragraph. But a high schooler might explain why you chose to grow certain plants and or vegetables and the process of growth and whatever else you want to learn. Then you record it. Then you can narrate for each child's reading book. So let's say we pick a book um, like The Secret Garden. And then in your notebook, your kids will have a section for narration. They can either tell it to you, you can type it up and they can copy it. As they get older, they can write each day their narration for what y'all read about. So that can be included. You can, um, and record that after you read aloud each day. Those are just, a, that's just one way to actually do it. What I want to do is show you some examples Um this is a geography notebook. And when you come in here, if I could get this thing open, um, you can see they printed out different parts of the earth. And then underneath it, you can open it and you write more information. That's the Pacific Ocean. So this is all different oceans in the world. Then we can come over here and these are continents. And again, underneath each one, you can make a little flap. And so that's a Fun, cool way more than just writing a paragraph. Let's see. Oh, this is latitude and longitude. Here we go. And you can talk about that type of thing. So you can do a lot of printouts like that. I was looking to see if they had um, more. Let me just show you the next one. This one is the Civil War. All right. So they've got some pictures on the front. I did mark a few of these pages. So let me see if I can get to them. So here are some famous people there. Oh no, this is not. These are. This is just a history notebook. So here we have uh, two different people. We have the Pilgrims and the Quakers, and they had to write in. It's like a Venn diagram, and instead of writing on here, you write underneath about the group and what's the same would go in this one, and what's different would go underneath each one of the pictures. Then we have um, Da Vinci, Galileo, and Marie Curie as scientists. And you, it says, what hardships did these scientists encounter due to the time in which they lived? And you could write something about them as well. Here we have some charts. And this was about the economy at that time. This is the Civil War during there. And so you can write about Pennsylvania. We got the Mason-Dixon line. And then here, she so could write about the North and the South as well sort of a fun way. And then we live in the state of Texas. This is a Texas notebook. And you can see you could print out a flag or you could have them color the flag. 
just get this page here. I like this because it's uh, a timeline. And when you open it, if I can get it open, it looks like that. And you write down what you learn about each of those events. And then when you're finished, you can fold it up. And what they did was they folded it all the way up and like that. So there's a variety of things that you could include in these notebooks. The biggest thing I think you need to realize is your kids begin to have tools of learning. They have to learn about this before they can write or draw a picture. And so this is a great tool for you to use at all different ages. And if you have multiple kids, it's a great tool. If you want your kids to lead in their education and make choices and actually learn it, more than a multiple choice test or a prepackaged curriculum, I highly recommend notebooking. You can get, um, I think it's, well, it says 3,000 free notebooking pages. Go to howtohomeschoolmychild.com slash free notebooking. And wherever you're listening to this, it will be written right below. And if you're listening to this, when we publish it, I have an offer in wherever you're listening to this, and it is you can get lifetime access to the Notebooking Pages website, and they've got tons of ones. But anyway, you can save $50. From what I was looking, it says it's $97 normally. You can save $50 and get it for $47 lifetime access. And I am telling you, you got every subject in the world. Um, you're going to see some of the free notebooking pages, but this has stuff and they are constantly adding to it. So I highly recommend you grabbing uh, that as well. And there'll be links wherever you're listening to this. So it'll take you right there. The last thing I will say is I have written a blog post on tools for learning. So head on over there, get a little bit more information about notebooking and how it could solve some of your problems, especially when you're homeschooling with multiple kids. Hey, I'm Carrie Beck with Homeschool Coffee Break. We'll talk to you next time.